So I'm the managing director of a software company based in London, it was a startup, um, that focuses on helping businesses, designer businesses, to exploit additive manufacturing, um, most particularly for mass customization. And we all know the benefits of additive manufacturing, and so I won't really go into it too much. Obviously, it helps you iterate your products quicker. There's a shorter time to market with your products. Um, we reduce upfront costs for molds, injection molding, um, local production, lower costs for warehousing, on-demand production, so and so forth. Um, but what interests us as a company especially when it comes to on-demand production, is bespoke products, mass customization. And every major household name is engaged in mass customization at the moment. These are some familiar brands that you would know, and they are going about enabling customers to interact with them, to engage in their products, um, from Ray-Ban to Nike to um, Smart Car, Jamvara, Zazzle, and in fact the president of Nike said um, customers want to interact with products on their own terms. So additive manufacturing is perfect for this, right? Um, the idea can be applied to a digital product, enable your customer to come online, in this case to customize something as simple as a phone cover from pre-selected finishes or colors and different elements to personalize it, for example, their own name. Order that product on demand and have that digital file sent to a local manufacturer to be built and sent back to the customer. And then, of course, the customer is happy because they've got their very own bespoke product. So this is what we're interested in in digital forming, but it is, um, we're talking about a technology that you know, a lot of companies here that you see today are working in aerospace, Formula One. I'm talking about consumer products. They're cheap. Um, you know, it's very hard to compete with mass production prices. But for us, it's interesting because mass customization is really the only sort of interesting angle on additive manufacturing that can carry through the cost because consumers are prepared to pay that little bit extra for a customized product. But mass customization, really, is it that simple? Because if you're not one of these major companies like Nike, you've got to put in huge capex, don't you, into setting up this kind of business. I mean, if you want an interface with your customers so that they can tell you what they want from your product, don't you have to source developers? Don't they need to code that interface for you? And of course, if they're coding it for you, then you have to relay your idea to them. And often creatives find that quite difficult, you know, to tell somebody exactly how you want that product displayed on the screen and what that interaction scenario is. And then of course, once you've spent that money and that time setting something up, which by the way, you can't change because you spent so much money on it, you've got to hope it's right. Um, you've got to choose your manufacturer the right manufacturer. You have to set up logistics. And what if a small designer wants to have internal components put in? Um, you know, is there going to be a manufacturer out there that's going to be happy to hold that lighting component, for example, that can be married up to the lampshade that they've designed? And of course, managing bespoke orders. How do you enable a business that could potentially have millions of customers creating millions of bespoke orders en masse at a million different addresses Get it right. <laughs> it's a difficult, tall order. So is that really simple? And of course, customer can. So this is something that digital forming over the past few years has identified. We are a, a B2B business. We help companies. And we've tended to help larger companies who've had the capital expenditure to invest in these kind of businesses. Um, but what about the small designer? We always talk about additive manufacturing helping the designer at home to set up his own business. But when it comes to mass customization, if he has to go through all of those things, then it's a tall order. So something that we've just recently released, um, which we hope will overcome those barriers, is um, our software in the cloud to enable any designer to set up a customizable product without a developer 
without needing to worry about the logistics and supply chain. They can source who their manufacturer is, put the margin on their product, and get that product embedded onto their site and set up a business without us. And to us, we thought that was one of the most important things um, when it comes to our business because most brands, even, you know, if not a, a small designer, but most brands even want to set up a demo. They want a proof of concept, a small little scenario in a live environment to test that this is something that can be viable. And until we could create a solution for them that would be easy without all that huge investment, then we didn't feel that we were breaking down the barriers sufficiently to get companies to adopt additive manufacturing for mass customization. So this is what we've developed <laughs> at Digital Forming. Um, and it's a, it's a platform and a software. Anybody who wants to create a customization experience online now can. And you don't need to talk to me to do it. For example, here's a cufflink, a very simple scenario of interchanging parts. Basically, it all starts with an idea. Anybody who can use existing CAD packages can use our software. This is an example of our software. It's a desktop solution that allows a designer to import his pre-designed parts uh, from his standard CAD package, and he can create a customization experience. And he can apply a whole series of modifiers onto his object. In this case, you can see text. And he can start building up parameters that a third party can then customize within so that the product is always buildable, it's functional within the brand's aesthetics. So there's the soft poly modifier that can allow for shape manipulation and apply parameters to that. For example, here a region of a pen has been uh, enabled to allow the customer to modify the shape. We can enable the text modifier to help the designer apply text or he can just import a whole series of predefined parts and create a library. And then this is our dynamic skin tool. So once the designer has created this on his desktop, he uploads it to the cloud, where the cloud converts it into this intuitive interface for the customer. And the designer can even go further. He can import his logo, he can stylize his slider bars, he can put his own um, icons in for his library of parts. So that it's very simple. He doesn't need to ask a web developer, he can do it himself. And what's more, he can link to manufacturing around the world. He can add on his margin and he can set up very simply a business for mass customization. So this is where we sit. Obviously, it all revolves around the designer, not us. So they, in theory, should be in the center of this diagram. The designer is the CAD creator. He's the one who knows what can be built, what should be functional, the parameters that he wants to set for customization by a third party. And he relays that into the digital forming platform. And he's now creating that interface for the user who has no idea how to use CAD and wants to be within safe parameters. Now what's interesting is the designer can choose exactly what those parameters are. They can be as wide or as narrow as the designer wants. In fact, if the designer says, you know, I've tried this and I think my customization experience was too wide, he can go back within minutes, change the parameters, reduce down the level of customization that's on offer to the user, and then re-upload a new experience. And he can connect to the 3D printer through the platform so that the experts can take care of the logistics. He doesn't need to. So how do you do it? And I really hope that those of you who know how to use CAD packages and are interested will go online because it's free to set up. All you need to do is go to digitalforming.com and you just need to register. And here you'll be given um, a series of instructions where you can download this desktop software at no cost. Um, you can import your products, compose your customization experience, upload it to the cloud when you're ready, add on your margin, select your manufacturer, and sell. It really is as simple as that. You don't need to talk to me or any member of my team. Of course, we encourage you to do so if you need to. This is just a closer look at the software. This is um, a designer in-house that was creating a phone cover. And he's importing some pre-designed parts. They're just importing in the orientation that he set in his CAD software. 
to everything he's dictating. I'm not showing here uh, shape manipulation, but that's also possible, and it's very interesting because you can add parameters. Um, and then within this screen, the designer can set everything. He can choose, he can import his buttons, but the software does create buttons and slider bars for you. And when you choose your colors and your manufacturers, they all appear for you. But if you want to go a level further and completely skin it so that it's according to your branding and according to your own specifications, then you can. And here you can see that the designer is now uh, choosing his materials. Now, if you look a bit closer, in this case, he's chosen iMaterialize. He's got a few different manufacturers to choose from. Once he's selected one manufacturer for a product, that's now fixed. He's only, he can only manufacture that particular product with iMaterialize, and he now has iMaterialize's um, finishing options. And as you look, what is happening in the system is the system is checking his customization experience um, to see what's buildable, what's within the parameters um, of, of, of what, what can be made within the finishes and the, and the additive manufacturing techniques offered by Materialize. And in this case, what's red is basically the system saying, hang on a second, you cannot make this product with this material because you don't adhere to the bounding box size or the minimum wall thicknesses. So it's a very interesting system. And the aim is obviously the designer takes away the complexity of design from the user, but what we wanted the system to do is take away the complexity of additive manufacturing away from the designer. So we're really aiming to break down the barriers. And there are links through the system also to cleaning processes through NetFab and iMaterialize. So really drawing together into one system this ability to now connect to your customers. And once complete, the designer can upload this customization experience to his own control panel on our platform. And here you can see there's another check for buildability, so just to make sure. Maybe one day we'll release that if we feel the software's you know, really robust. Um, and then the designer can click on settings. He can put a title, he can choose a category, add a description, he can upload some images. He can even see how his product is selling. But the interesting bit is that we offer you an embed code. So what we loved about YouTube is the fact that you can take a YouTube video and you can embed it into your website. So why shouldn't you do that with a customization experience? Because we don't want this to sit on our website. We want this to sit on your website. This is your experience. You choose where it sits on the web. So this is an example of a website where a customization experience has been embedded. It's assashuash.com. And when you click on, you can see there's a customizable product. Now that window, the customization experience, is sitting on our servers, but it's drawing through like a YouTube video into his URL. And here, this lamp that he's designed, and he's created all the parameters relating to the customization experience, uh, can be modified. And you can see that he's um, created our assembly. He's used the assembly modifier to create a series of different bases for his lamp. Very simple. And then he's got these fins to make this beautiful effect on the shade. But again, it's the assembly tool. And then you'll see at the top, there's a slider bar. Now, this is the soft poly and dynamic skin tool where he's enabling uh, the product to be shape manipulated. But of course, you can see that you can only take uh, the customization experience to the length of the slider bar. So he's set those parameters. So really, this is a true level of customization that doesn't exist on the market today, which is, you know, really this is a unique product. If you customize it, it will be a one of a kind. And, and the product is beautiful. When it went for printing, that's how it came out. And it was even nicer when the light was put in. So this system we've had up and running for a short while, just a few months, and we encourage you to use it, but I thought I'd show you some examples of what designers have done already through the system. Here, this is an espresso cup, in case you haven't noticed. It's connected now to iMaterialize, and it's made in ceramic. And very simply, there's not a massive customization experience like in the lamp. It's just a series of interchangeable parts and a series of color finishes. But again, we didn't design this interface, the designer did. Slightly different interface. This is a pen, it's made up of four different regions. 
The designer wanted to allow um, sizing of text on the pen, but also he enables uh, the color change, obviously, as you can see. He sets some dip dye colors, and this is produced um, by 3T. And you can see that you can change the different levels of the, the pen, the three different sort of segments of it. So it's a, more, it's, a, it's a slightly different type of interface. But again, this is the, what he wanted, and he's fully uh, created this experience to look like this. Very fun. A designer called Alfred de Rooster has made a little fun rooster, or beaver, actually. Again, a series of interchangeable parts. And the designer, the customer can now choose um, and, and create this little friendly creature. So it can be applied to toys, not just functional products. And here you can see it's a completely different interface. He's totally branded it for himself. This is a jewelry, a piece of jewelry. It's a pendant. This is using our text tool. You haven't really seen that yet. Um, I was playing around with it. I filled my experience. I put my name there, Lisa. And there are different elements, but to this, what we've seen is, is the uh, dynamic skin tool. So you can rotate the different elements. What the design has done is fixed the regions that he doesn't want you to touch. So it will only spin around the, the axis that he specified. Um, Michael Denvers has used this to customize a bracelet. In this case, he actually didn't want anybody to really change it apart from sizing it. So simple, but he wouldn't have been able to do this himself um, if he was going to go to a, you know, if he wanted, without spending money, he'd have to go to a web developer to implement it. But now he can come onto the platform and he can just create this simple sizing mechanism. This I thought was interesting. Um, this is a lamp that has a solar panel in it, and it was designed by Nina Edwards um, Anker. And she, she decided she was going to 3D print it, although she's done this before. But she's created a slider bar that will change the angle of the solar panel, because obviously the solar panel is feeding energy in through the lamp. And depending on where you are in the world, the slider bar is going to change the, the angle so that it can absorb most light. So here it's on Singapore, and you can swing it over to Jakarta, wherever you are. So that's a fun idea I thought was very interesting. So we've seen designers use this in ways we haven't, you know, we never envisaged and we, we never could have imagined. And I'm sure over the next few months, as we build up more and more users as we are, we're going to see them using it for things that uh, are well beyond what we ever intended this to be used for. So it is actually very simple. If you're a designer or part of a design-led business, uh, now you can design a customization experience, not just a product. You can dictate how your product um, is displayed to your customer, where it sits on the web. You can choose exactly who your manufacturer is. You can specify what margin you want to add to production. And you can let our suppliers take care of the rest. So this platform, um, it's, it's very new. We hope in time that we can get more and more designers using it and starting to exploit additive manufacturing for mass customization. And as we build up more designers, um, we hope to add more manufacturers to the system. Thank you very much.